Hey, welcome back to the channel. So we're out in the barn today, just kind of messing around, watching a little football and cleaning up a little bit. That's what we're doing. And I wanted to get out some cameras and kind of do a little bit of testing. And I've got three different cameras here. So we should have a good sample by the time we're done. Uh, so we have APS-C camera in the mix. We have the uh, Lumix S9 and we have the ZV-E1. And we're running the uh, Phantom LUT natural on all three of them and uh, one thing i wanted to check real uh, to see today if like the other day i was out here in the barn filming with the s9 just in aperture priority mode and had a lot of flickering with the uh the lights and i have led lights out here in the barn these lights up here are led lights and i didn't know if that was kind of messing it up so we're just out here kind of messing around checking out the colors to see what we think Checking out the autofocus. I found the autofocus to be pretty good on the S9. Maybe, probably not as reliable as what I've experienced with the Sony in the past. Still pretty good, pretty good. It's a little bit of adjustment. It works a little bit different, but it does work pretty good uh, from what I can tell for the most part. Just kind of checking out to see what we got going on here. I don't know. Let me know what you think about the colors here. We'll do a, some autofocus tests and see what we think. All right, now I'm going to jump out of the screen and jump back in. Typical autofocus test. How we do? We back in. Do it again. How we do? We back in, do it again. How we do? We back in, do it again. How about if I'm further back? Does that make any difference? Am I still in focus? I'll go over here on this side. I'll go over here on this side. Come a little closer. Still tracking me? Look pretty good. Let me know how this natural LUT looks. I'm just baking it right into the file. I normally don't do that on my Sony cameras, but since they all three can do it, I just like, you know what, whatever. Now, a lot of people on one of my other videos, they were like talking to me. They were like saying how they like the full frame look. And I think that was just because of the amount of blurry background that I was getting, but you can get really good blurry background with this APS-C camera if we're using the right lens, uh, especially if you use a prime, like a 1.4 prime. I mean, you can get a lot of blurry, <laughs> enough, plenty enough, that is. So I got all these lenses on two because that's as low as the Sigma will go in the Lumix X9, but let me know what you think about the blurry background. Do we have enough blurry background? And it's weird because the, uh, Lumix looks more on the screen. It looks more cropped in than the, than the other two. The other two look about the same. I have a 16 millimeter on the APS-C Sony, a 20 millimeter on the full frame Sony and clear image zoomed a little bit. And the uh, Lumix S9, I just have it with the, just the, image uh, e-stabilization on, so, but it looks like it's cropped in way more than the other two, but that's the kind of kind of the way it goes. Let me know how these are looking. I just have them in aperture priority because I didn't want to mess with a bunch of manual settings out here in the barn, just to kind of see what the camera would do and what it would look like just on aperture priority. I do a lot of filming in aperture priority because I'm lazy and I don't want to think about settings all the freaking time. I don't know, they all look about the same as far as autofocus goes. Like I say, the S9, it may not be as good, like it gets confused sometimes, but for the most part, I think it's been pretty good. The only time it's really missed me in a bad way when I was out filming that uh, shot by the uh, Rock Fireplace and it missed me right there 
for whatever reason. I think I hit the I hit the screen on accident, and when you hit the screen, it sets a focus point somewhere else. And I was standing far away from the camera and couldn't see that it didn't, hadn't caught my face. So again, user error is a lot of this. Are we seeing any of the banding that was going on? Are we seeing any of the banding that was really concerning last time? There is on the Lumix S9 a, uh, a, a synchronized, uh, I forgot what they call it, something where you can kind of maybe it'll uh, scan LED dots and adjust your shutter speed to uh, limit the banding, but you can't go into it in aperture priority mode, which is weird. But again, I'm just getting used to the uh, menu system, which is crazy in itself. Like, did you know in the Lumix cameras, you have a, a full page of menu settings for, for just the back display, one for photo, then one for video. And that's on the little wrench, on the, that's on the little cog setting on the menu. And then when you go to the little uh, cog, cog icon, there's a whole nother page of menus for the back display settings. So you have three different back display setting screens in two different places. That's weird. I mean, that's a lot. Of, that is a lot, a lot of screen settings. So, and man, I wish I could gray some stuff out on the uh, Lumix S9. Like, if, you, if you've, um, you guys that shoot Lumix, I mean, there's a bazillion different uh, settings for your video, like what, what you want to shoot in. You know, 24, 30, so on and so forth, that kind of stuff. Half of them I'll never ever use, you know? I wish I could just gray them out so I don't have to look at them or try to figure out what they are when I'm out in the field, just gray, gray them out so I can not even see them. A lot of the menus, I wish every camera company would do that, like be able to just gray it out so you don't have to even look at it if you're not ever gonna use it, if it means nothing to you. It would make thumbing through the menus so much easier, you know? Like, dang, boy, there's a lot of different settings in the Lumix camera, way more than I could imagine. But anyway, we're going to do uh, another little uh, autofocus test. I want to sit down at my rolling cart here, and I'm going to come in and sit down. I'm going to use my light, and uh, we're going to see what it looks like. Then I want to open up the garage door so I can get a nice backlit, you know, scenario and see which one does best. about the test today which camera do you think came out on top I won't know until I get to see the video my favorite one to film out of all of them you know out here in the barn situation is the FX 30 
It's not even a close, there's not even a, a it, it's so far ahead of all the other two, it's not even crazy. It's just so much easier to film with in this type of scenario. I'm just kind of bored today, so I'm out, out here doing this, so whatever, just to kind of see for myself and thought I'd bring you along for the ride. I think the S9 is going to look the best. So anyway, if you've enjoyed the video, make sure you drop a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. We have just a few more tests to do on the S9, then I need to decide if I'm going to keep it or not. So thanks for watching and we will see you on the next one.